Good afternoon everyone, joined by the lovely Candice again. We're in our home county of Essex today. It's a Sunday afternoon and we've got an interesting little adventure planned for you today. We're in Fobbing, as I say in Essex. The London Gateway Port is just over there. Canvey Island's out that way as well, the good old Canvey Island, my favourite place on earth. And you've got Shellhaven Oil Refinery. And we're currently at the start of Fobbing Marshes. The plan is we're going to look for Fobbing Decoy Bunker, QF Starfish Decoy Bunker. So they were used in World War II as a means of attracting the Luftwaffe's attention uh, to drop their bombs on the decoy sites instead of sort of major populations, towns and cities. So it would have consisted of a bunker with two rooms in it and it usually would have had like a like a, an external storage rack for like drums of oil which they would have uh, set light to electrically from the bunker, the manned bunker. So I've explored, I think I've explored one of these before in Shottisham with Alfie in the Van Explorer up in Suffolk and yeah we're looking for this one today it's quite a way out in the marshes and the, the arse end of nowhere really so we're going to look for that and then I've got a new rucksack on my back I'll show you that later and inside that I've got a USMR I thought let's have a spot of lunch we've had breakfast but we've not had lunch yet let's have an MRE for lunch at the bunker <laughs> So it should be fun this one. So right we're gonna get a move on. It's enough talking. Let's get walking. I don't know if you can hear me over the wind because we're out on the marshes and it's pretty open, it's blowing. But we finally found the decoy bunker, so it's here and here, just in front of the London Gateway port. Shellhaven Oil Refinery is kind of over there and Canby's past that. So, yeah, so it's a, a Starfish QF decoy bunker. World War II. There's loads of bits of concrete laying around. I don't know if that's part of it. So yeah, there's the bunker there. It's heavily overgrown. And these would have been the storage tanks. I don't know if you can see from the glare of the sun. I can't see the screen myself. So these would have been to hold the the, uh, the barrels of oil on that they would have set light to electronically from the control bunker there so that would have been manned so it would have been safe for the operators to do so there would have been a generator room in there as well there would have been two rooms and yeah and they would have set fire to them here so it would have created a decoy a target for the Luftwaffe the German bombers drop their bombs on rather than drop them on the Shellhaven oil refinery and like the gateway port and stuff so they would have seen them dropping them here and then nearby anti-aircraft gun sites and stuff would have shot them down so they would have given their position away by dropping bombs here rather than the designated targets which is quite clever one of the many secrets which were revealed after the end of World War II was the use of decoy bombing sites. 
These were areas of open landscape where dummy airfields, docks, factories, railway yards and oil refineries were built to tempt enemy planes into dropping their lethal loads onto innocuous fields rather than their intended target. It is not widely known that Fobbin Marshes was home to one of these decoys. This was an oil QF. Laid out on the flat terrain north of Shellhaven oil installation were all the paraphernalia of nighttime bombing deception. On the approach of German aircraft, massive fires would have been lit using petrol, paraffin and kerosene. Still chutes would splash water onto the conflagration to create the effect of explosions. Rings of oil were lit to look like blazing oil tanks. Basket fires, boiler fires, grids and arrays all contributed to give the effect of Shellhaven oil installation being devastated by successful bombing. Hopefully this deception would divert some of the attackers to the dummy. Only 12 oil QF decoys were built in Britain. Each of them would have had its own purpose built control bunker. Fobbing is almost certainly the only one left standing, the last of its kind. Inside are the operations room, with its escape hatch in the roof, and the engine room, which would have housed a diesel generator. Nearby, a mysterious series of long concrete walls add a puzzle. What are they? Why are they here? Half a mile to the east, a pillbox and two spigot mortar pedestals for home guard anti-tank weapons are probably defences of the country's main defence line, the General Headquarters GHQ line, which used Holhaven Creek as its primary anti-tank barrier. The decoy bunker was designed to protect Shellhaven oil refinery with many burning pools of oil and simulated fire rings from burning oil storage tanks. The night shelter consisted of an operations room, an engine room which housed the generator and an escape hatch. The sides of the building would have been partially covered with earth. The oil would have been ignited electrically from the shelter. The oil storage bay is a short distance away from the night shelter and consists of four parallel walls 7 metres long by 1.3 metres high on heavy concrete foundations. It is thought to have functioned as storage bays for the drums of oil necessary for the operation of the site. The earliest reference to its operation is the 1st of August 1941 and the last reference was in March 1942. And that would have been the emergency escape hatch. So it's part of the ladder still in place. Satanists have been here. <laughs> That's your emergency escape hatch, so the rest of the ladder's gone. The hatch has gone, it might be up on top of the, uh, the roof, we could have a look. Sorry, so this is the emergency escape shaft. Now I think this room would have been the generator room. Not sure, there's something on the floor, like a brick structure, going around there, so that probably would have been sealed off. Look, you can actually see where there would have been a partition wall, so there would have been something bricked off there, like a separate little room and this would have been acted like a corridor coming from, from the entrance into here in fact maybe this was the generator room then because you've got these holes here so obviously like the cables and the pipes running out to um, the oil barrel storage they would have set light to would have come through there surely there's nothing like that in this room
uh, I've climbed up the emergency escape hatch. There's no sign of a, a hatch or anything, but there definitely would have been a hatch because there's some metal rivets fitted here, so there would have been something on top of that, of course, to like keep the rain out and stuff. There's the the oil storage reservoir there, the four concrete platforms next to where Candice is sat. So they would have had some kind of pipe or cables running out from here over to there so they could remotely set fire to it from this safe position. We've got some pretty good views over Fobbin Marshes here. The uh, Thames estuary path goes all the way sort of along there and I've walked that. I'm just getting some water boiled up. We're sat right next to the bunker here. And we're going to have this USMRE menu two. Beef shredded in barbecue sauce. Okay, we've got the black beans in that sauce stuff, the side, boiling up on the stove. And we've got the main entree, the shredded beef in uh, barbecue sauce in the FRH and the cheese of jalapenos just in there to warm through a bit. We've made up our drinks, coffee and the hot chocolates to the left of me and this is that lemon and lime drink I've mixed it in the beverage bag and then I've stuck it in the Nalgene so you can see it, it's a really uh, nuclear waste colour green. I quite like the look of it though. You get well, I've made about 300 mil worth of it. 12 ounces, I think that is. Yeah, about that. It's got quite a nice smell to it. Quite a refreshing taste as well. It's better than the plain lime uh, lemon one they do. Not overly sweet. I mean, there was a little bit of sediment left in the bag. I like that one. Yeah, it's better than some of the other flavours they do in the MREs. Just show you the coffee hot chocolate letting that cool down nothing different with that we've seen that before next thing let's try out we'll have to have our dessert first before we have the main we're still waiting on it the chocolate chip cookies breaking up a bit there we go it's very dry and crunchy it's not moist at all but it's nice though, that'll go well to coffee that will, and the hot chocolate, in fact, let's try it now. Yeah, that's the way to have that, nice big chocolate chips though in it, they haven't scrimped on them at all. Okay, I've just had the chewing gum, that was nothing, nothing different really, so I thought what's the point in filming it, but it's nice. Let's get the tortillas out because our food's nearly ready. We've just been warming stuff through on the stove just so it's not cold in places. The US uh, FRHs aren't always reliable. So here's the plain tortillas. I haven't got a tray with me today so I'm banking on this uh, silver ground mat being clean. Um, Otherwise, we're all going to have the two bob bits. <laughs> so, here we go. So, we've got some barbecue sauce. And we've got some cheese as well with jalapeno. Candice just looked at me and gone, <laughs> Do you want to try a bit without the cheese on? Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll save that then for a, a bit. I'll put, I'll put it in one, I won't put it in the other. Ah! So, this is. This is cheese spread with jalapenos in it. Yeah. Lovely jubbly. Wow, that's lovely. <laughs> See if you warm it through a bit in the FRH, it uh, spreads a bit better. Let's get out our shredded beef, which apparently is already in barbecue sauce. So he's open from the side, which I think is quite nice. 
and there we go. It smells like it's well, it's not a tomato sauce. You can smell the the barbecue sauce straight away. That's lovely. I want to have a little sniff of that. A little look. Sniff my beef. <laughs> Give it a little stir. Yeah, it looks like it's sort of strips of beef. Oh, remember not to put too much in, so I overfill it. I think three is about the most you can get away with, but I never learn. That'll do. <laughs> right, do you want to try a little bit on its own? Candice is going to taste it first, everyone. <laughs> I'm not allowed to film her face. Even though now she's a year older, she's a year prettier as well. She gets better with age. Oh, what? That's really not. Is it what? Is it good? It's really saucy. Saucy? A bit like you then. <laughs> That's really nice. It's really nice, yeah. Go and have another little bit if you want. Do you reckon we need more barbecue sauce on it? No. No? Because I won't bother then. Because we've got this barbecue sauce here. Do you want a tortilla to put it in? Um, you have to have a tortilla, sure one. Sure. Alright, well. I'll wrap this up now, oh god. Here we go. I know it is. Here we go. That is pretty good. The flavours are pretty strong on it. There is a lot, I repeat, a lot of sauce to it. I think I prefer the, the beef to be minced. I'm not gonna lie, but it, it's still pretty decent. They do some wonderful things with beef in these MREs, I think. Do you wanna try a bit like this? Not with a cheese, though. Not with a cheese. Yeah, it's not that bad, honestly. I think these are some of my favourite ones, the ones that come with the tortillas. Um, yeah, you have two of them. It's really filling. I just got a lot of cheese in that mouthful. That was good. I almost forgot we've got black beans in a seasoned sauce as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to try some of it on its own, and then we're going to try oh, try some of it in a tortilla with a little bit of the leftover shredded beef. There's our uh, our beans. If you can see them, oh, they smell quite strong. Don't get loads. So we're putting it in a tortilla without the cheese because Candice doesn't like that. And some of the beef. Yeah, that's enough in there, yeah? yeah. I'm going to try some of these on their own and then she's going to try. No, go on, you try it first. Go on. She's trying a tortilla with the beef and the beans. Yeah, they're alright. I could eat them. Once again, it's something new for me to be eating. Do you want to try them on their own? That's really nice. Is it really nice like that, yeah? Let's try it. There we go. I prefer this combination the most, definitely. But I don't think we need that barbecue sauce. I'll save that for for another camp where it could come in handy. Let's fill in this one. So you get a good main, good side. You get your cookie for dessert or to go with your coffee and stuff. You know, I like the. I like the lemon and lime drink mix. Candy said she couldn't really taste it, but I think it was it was it was good. I preferred it over some of the others, like the tropical punch and things like that. I mean, to be honest, I'll drink any of them, but I think that one's probably my favourite one. Can I mix it So yeah, of course you can. Yeah, so Candice is gonna just turn you around. She's gonna she's gonna mix in black beans in the seasoned sauce with the shredded beef in barbecue sauce. So that's the MRE finish, that was menu number two, uh, shredded beef in barbecue sauce. So like I said earlier I've got a new rucksack and this one's nice and cheap and cheerful, it's decathlon and it cost me about £12 and it's a 30 litre Arpanaz 30 rucksack Quechua and it would be really good for like let's say if you're on a budget it's good um, 
little summer wild camp or a day walk like this where you've got like a bit of cooking to do and stuff like that you've got a big pocket in the lid put in stuff so I've got like car keys, head torch, first aid kit bits that I need to get to straight away the straps are fairly padded I mean you've not got load lifter straps as you'd expect for something of that price and it's got a very simple hip belt yeah clip and a sternum strap clip as well uh, two wand pockets for water bottles that's that's a prerequisite for me really I like to have those on rucksacks it's got some web in here that I suppose you could loop some stuff to and then a central buckle unclip that and then it's a drawer called closure there's no internal zip pocket and it's got a really big central pocket there's no water bladder sleeve or anything in it just one big central pocket so it's a a simple cheap and cheerful rucksack it'd be great for summer wild camps if you're taking a bivy bag or a hoop bivy and I've tested it you can f I can fit all my gear in it that I need it just makes you think about what you're taking so you don't take unnecessary stuff with you and yeah that's it so here's the bunker that we've just been sat outside and we're gonna head back back towards the church which is just over there so yeah this was a little look at fobbing decoy bunker from World War Two. so yeah hopefully you can hear me over the the wind that's just coming over from the Thames but yeah that's the end of this video thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it looking at the bunker and checking out the uh, the ration pack with us it wasn't too bad that so yeah, thanks for watching, get in the comments, let us know what you think, cheers for your support guys, it does mean a lot, and until next time, stay safe, take care and look after each other, get out and explore, we'll see you again, ta for now, bye! bye.